we want to take a look at the Massimo continuous pulse ox. The Massimo will monitor the patient's heart rate and their oxygen concentration level within the blood, and if it goes above or below the set value, it will alarm to let someone know that there's a problem. Press and hold the on button till the machine comes on. Okay? Right now it's saying no send because we don't have any sensors hooked up to it. But we want to program in our values, and those values should come from the doctor. However, if they don't, we do have default values that we can program into it. Now, initially, when I press our selector button, it's going to give us that alarm, and that's because the machine is locked. In order to uh, unlock the machine, we press the enter and up arrow simultaneously until it reads set in the upper window. Right now it reads HNN because HNN is locked. If we use our up or down arrows, we can scroll through the SLP or sleep mode, which we don't use in, the, in this industry, or STD, which is standard mode, which is the mode that we want. So we select that by pressing the enter button. Now we're in standard mode, we can go in and adjust the parameters that we receive from the physician for that patient. So we press our selector button once and it will show us what our low oxygen level is. Right now it's 92, which is our default setting, unless we receive instructions from the doctor to set it at something else. When we press that button twice, this takes us to our high oxygen level. So we leave this off, that would be the equivalent of 100%. So I don't think we're gonna get it above 100%. When we press that button a third time, it's going to take us to our low heart rate. Okay? So if we want our pulse rate to be at 70, which is what our default is on the low, we use the increase button or the decrease to take it to 70. When we press the selector button a fourth time, this is how we adjust our high heart rate setting. So we're going to increase that up to 200. you see it goes up in increments of five. Now we can enter it in or we can simply leave it alone for a few seconds and it will return to the main screen. Okay. So now before we take it out and put it on the patient, we want to lock that machine in so that nobody can adjust the parameters that we've set. And we do that by getting back into the, the selection mode, pressing the up arrow and the enter button until it reads set in the upper window and we want to get back into that HNN mode which is the home mode. We hit our enter that locks our settings in now no one can get in and adjust those parameters. Now each of these lights on the front of the machine indicate approximately two hours of charge time. So right now we have two lights lit so we've got approximately four hours worth of charge time. It's a good idea to leave this plugged in at all times to keep that battery fully charged because you only have up to eight hours. So if the power failure, at least we have a battery backup for a while. Now, we need to hook up our sensors to the machine. We start out by using our patient cable. Patient cable plugs directly into the front of the machine. On the other end, we're going to use either the finger probe or, as in this case and with an infant, we're going to use the adhesive wraps to wrap around the patient's foot. So we secure that. And now we can wrap this around our patient's foot. Now the way that the unit works is it sends a pair of infrared pulses through the patient and measures the amount of infrared that is retained or absorbed by the body. And that's going to vary depending on what the blood um, oxygen level is. So we want our light to be on top of the foot. And then we wrap that around. Now every four hours, this should be repositioned to prevent skin break, breakdown from the adhesive. So every four hours, we're going to remove this. We can move it on the same foot. We can put it on the different foot. We can put it up on the patient's wrist. We can move it around. Okay? If it loses its adhesiveness, we can peel off one of these little adhesive dots. 
and use this to adhere it to the patient's foot. Okay. Now also on a daily basis, we want to remove this and take some isopropyl alcohol and clean the surface of the sensor. Make sure that we're getting a good contact. Okay. On a weekly basis, we're going to remove the adhesive wrap and replace that altogether. Now, this is how we would set it up on an infant. However, if we have an adult, then uh, we use a different probe. We use the finger probe. Take this off and insert the finger probe. Lock it into place. There is a depiction of the finger on the top of the unit so that you know which side is up. Okay. So we'll put that on our patient and see what our values are. This bar on the side and one over here. Depending on how many lights are lit up, it's going to tell us how strong of a signal we're getting. In order to reduce the volume, we just use the down arrow. If we want to adjust the lights, we can press our light button down here. If it's night, maybe we want a little less light. If it's during the day, might want it nice and bright. Press our enter button, and we're set on the light level. Okay. So right now, we're getting a 97% oxygen level and a pulse rate of 99, now 100. So... Now there's our alarm. So when we get an alarm, we can hit our alarm silencer button, and again, that will silence the alarm for two minutes. Unless the problem is corrected, then the alarm will stop. Okay. Turn it off, press and hold, and the unit will turn off. Before we deliver the Massimo to the patient, we need to make sure that those parameters are locked in place so that nobody can adjust them. We want them to be set in accordance with the doctor's prescription. And in order to do that, we need to press our up arrow and enter button again at the same time and hold that down until it reads set in the upper window. We hit our up or down buttons to scroll to HNN. We press enter. Our parameters are set so they can't be changed in the home. Now each of these lights on the front of the machine indicate approximately two hours of charge time. So right now we have two lights lit so we've got approximately four hours worth of charge time. It's a good idea to leave this plugged in at all times to keep that battery fully charged because you only have up to eight hours. So if the power failure, at least we have a battery backup for a while. If you have any further questions, Refer back to the operator's manual. Thanks for watching.